The Dallas Stars are set to take part in a must-win Game 4 against the Seattle Kraken. And on today's episode, we'll talk about why there should still be reason for optimism that the Stars can win this series. We'll talk about Jake Gottinger and how he'll respond in this game and get you caught up to speed on everything you need to know about Miro Haskinen's health and so much more with the Stars roster. Give you my thoughts on what the Stars should do heading into this game if they want the Game 4 win. All of this and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Tuesday, May 9th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked on Stars your first listen every single day be sure to subscribe to the show on youtube follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice we're always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen to the show thank you guys for the continued support throughout this playoff run uh, been a lot of new listeners and viewers uh, and a lot of kind words from from you guys saw qu- quite a bit of bad on sunday night in game three uh, where the dallas stars lose seven two at the hands of the seattle kraken and When your team wins a playoff game, it feels like you'll never lose again. And the same applies when you lose. You feel like you're never going to win again. And either of those results in blowout fashion can amplify those feelings. And so I know that there's a lot of despair around the Dallas Stars fan base, maybe at the moment, given how things went on Sunday night. But something that we should all remember is that a single blowout does not define a series especially in this year's playoffs in the year 2023. And I have a few different examples, uh, including examples here in this round, as well as round one. You look across uh, the second round, uh, not just in the Stars Kraken series, but even out east, Carolina. The Hurricanes win game one and two against the Devils, 5-1 and 6-1 respectively. And then the New Jersey Devils go on to win 8-4 in game three. All of those games blowouts, but you would think maybe after the Canes outscore the Devils 11-2 to in the first two matchups, you think maybe that this is going to be an easy run for the Hurricanes and they sweep, but that's not the case. The Vegas Golden Knights um, were victorious in Game 1 of their series against the Edmonton Oilers 6-4. The Oilers win 5-1 in Game 2, a blowout for the Oilers, but we also know that Vegas is fully capable of winning a game on their own in this series even for the dallas stars if you look in round one they were the on the giving end and the receiving end uh, of blowout losses Uh, they blew out minnesota in game two of round one and then got blown out in minnesota in game three and neither of those games truly defined the series even the boston bruins they won game four of their series against the florida panthers six two to take a commanding three one series lead But then we all know what happened after that. The Florida Panthers ended up rallying and winning the next three games and would go on uh, to win the entire series and now in a really good spot here in their own playoff run. And then even Toronto, the team that Florida is playing right now, the Lightning beat Toronto 7-3 to in game one of their first round series. And we all know how that series ended. The Lightning never really even got close uh, to matching that energy uh, that they had in game one. And there, I could go on and on. There's probably even some other games and other series that I missed, but I feel like those examples are enough to, to say that there's plenty to dislike from the Stars in Game 3 against the Seattle Kraken, but there's no reason to sit back and for any reason think that this series is over. Uh, one game, especially this early in the series, is not going to define the series, in my mind, or it shouldn't, especially given the talent that the Dallas Stars have the fight that they've shown time and time again this season, and especially here in the playoffs. You can't let one bad loss define you as a team 
or define the series, but you can let a response define your entire season. And, and this is um, obviously with every approaching playoff game, it's going to be the most important game of the star season. Uh, but this one, the, the sense of urgency feels much heavier, at least in my mind, uh, than it did against the Minnesota Wilds. I, I felt like it, it was just a given that the Stars were going to win that game four, and then they went out and, and did just that. It was a pretty solid win. It was gutsy. It was close. It was not the easiest win, but but this Seattle team is so, so different than Minnesota, and you have to game plan for the Kraken differently than you do for the Minnesota Wild, and the way that you beat the Seattle Kraken has to be done differently than the Minnesota Wild. And so I do feel a little bit more concerned going into this game, but the Stars have been backed into a corner several times this season, but they seem to always find ways in order to get themselves out and set themselves up for success. I don't think this is the end of the line for the team, but that this is the game for the Stars that has the most pressure surrounding it uh, in quite some time. It's obviously not win or go home. The series isn't over, regardless of what happens here in game four. Uh, but I think we'd get a pretty good idea of the direction the series is headed, depending on who wins. And the Stars have a phenomenal opportunity to come out and show the world, show themselves, show the fan base that Game 3 is not who they are, that is not their identity, and that game is not going to define them for the rest of the postseason. And given the leadership on this team, uh, both in the coaching staff and just in the locker room amongst the players, you have to be pretty excited uh, and anxious to see what the product is out there on the ice. Disappointment across the team after game three, uh, but it would not be like this group to just take that punch and roll over and quit. It's not what I should, it's not what I'm expecting, and it's not what you should expect either. We should expect an absolute dogfight in game four in Seattle. It's going to be a ton of fun to watch, and, and there are certainly going to be a few players that we need to keep an eye on throughout this game. One of those being goaltender Jake Ottinger. We'll talk a little bit more about Jake and how he can continue to write his legacy coming up next. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by our friends at Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed. And that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. A special thank you to all of our everydayers out there tuning in and making Locked on Stars part of their everyday routine, especially here in the playoffs as we get you covered for every game pre and post game. And of course, a big one tonight, the Dallas Stars taking on the Seattle Kraken in game four of their second round series. The Stars looking to get things tied up back at two wins apiece, headed back to Dallas for game Five and a player who will have all eyes on him in this game is the young stud goaltender from Dallas, Jake Ottinger. This is an opportunity for Jake to prove his legitimacy here in the postseason. He really does uh, have a knack for bouncing back after bad games. I mean, we talk about it all the time, or at least I do on this show, as well as uh, anywhere else that, that will listen, whether that be locked on NHL or. Uh, radio appearances, so on and so forth. But that's not just me talking. The numbers back it up. Even in this postseason, after a rough Game 3 loss in Minnesota against the Wild, where Jake Ottinger allowed four goals for the rest of the series, these were his numbers. A six or a 9-6-5 save percentage, one goals against average, and one shutout. After a, a horrendous loss against the Minnesota Wild in Game 3, it felt similar to the loss that the that the Stars suffered in Game 3 against the Kraken, Jake Ottinger was the best player on the ice for the Stars for the remainder of that series, only allowing one goal per game, shutting out Minnesota in Game 5. Absolutely stunning performance from Jake Ottinger after what was a pretty shaky performance in Game 3. And you just look 
at Stanley Cup history. You look at playoff history in the NHL. Every championship goalie goes through rough patches. Andre Vasilevsky in 2021. I know that he and the Lightning, were, you know, had a three-year run of going to the Stanley Cup Finals, but that that second year that they won the Cup after defeating Dallas in 2020, Vasilevsky. It was not all sunshine and rainbows on that run. And, and uh, six, he had six goals against in Game Three against the Florida Panthers, and then in the next game, only allowing two uh, in a win. And then even in another series, he allowed four goals against in Game Four against the Carolina Hurricanes, and then proceeded to pitch a shutout in the next game, which is a game where the Tampa Bay Lightning clinched that series over the Carolina Hurricanes. So big performances from Andre Vasilevsky in. in you know, elimination games, or at least one of those performances in an elimination game in the playoffs after a not so great outing. And even former Dallas star Braden Holtzby back in 2018, when he was with the Washington Capitals, he had five goals against in game one of the Stanley Cup finals against the Vegas Golden Knights. And then in game two, he only allowed two goals and then only one goal against in game three for the Capitals, who would eventually go on to win the Stanley Cup. And those are just a couple of recent examples. I'm sure you could go all the way down the timeline and look and see every single Stanley Cup champion, their goalie or multiple goalies, if they used multiple in their playoff runs, it wasn't a perfect game for them every single time they went out there on the ice. I mean, that's the expectation and the regular season when you have a star goaltender starting around 60 games for you, like Jake Ottinger did in 22-23 for the Stars. But that has to carry over into the playoffs as well because the competition is the best. I mean, the regular season, you're going to go through stretches where you're playing lottery teams or teams that aren't very good, non-playoff teams. But then in the playoffs, you're playing exclusively playoff teams. And especially the deeper you get into the playoffs, you're playing better opponents. The, the quality uh, of the offenses that you face are going to increase in theory as you continue on. And so we can't expect Jake Ottinger to always have these perfect games these games where he looks incredible because we have gotten a lot of those but we're also going to see him struggle we've seen plenty of stanley cup champion level goalies con Smythe winning goalies have bad performances and while game three against the kraken was the, the worst performance statistically of jake ottinger's career i mean not just in the playoffs but just in general i don't think there's any reason to believe that that is the new normal for jake i feel like that is an outlier uh, in a playoff career that has been outstanding and will hopefully continue to be outstanding. Th this is an opportunity for Jake to either roll over and call it quits, or he can continue to push forward and continue to write his legacy as one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. I feel like ever since last year against the Calgary Flames, that, that narrative was starting to begin, and then he has a very, very good regular season for the Stars, and he's had an overall very good and very productive postseason with a few misses here and there. But again, those are to be expected. And if we've seen anything from Jake Ottinger during his young career, I think it's going to be the latter of those choices. He is going to continue to fight. He's going to continue to push forward. I imagine that he's probably forgotten about this game. He's moved on from it. He's burned the tape and he's going to be refreshed, reset and ready to go tonight against the Seattle Kraken. And, and I cannot wait to see how he responds to this adversity. Uh, and now I'm sure pl plenty uh, of critics have now poked their head to say that Jake Ottinger is a fraud, that he doesn't belong. He's not a truly elite goalie, but the numbers and the tape of his young career would say otherwise. And this is an incredible opportunity for him to prove just that, to help his team get the win here in game four and get the series even back up at two. Well, we're going to continue to get you prepared for tonight's game against the Seattle Kraken. We'll take a little bit of time to address Miro Haskin and get the update on his health. And we'll also talk about a few changes that I think maybe should be made to the Stars lineup in order to get the best out of the team. We'll talk about all of that coming up next. Thank you again to all the everydayers out there tuning in to Locked On Stars, getting ready for Game 4 of the Dallas Stars, playing the Seattle Kraken, and for this game, there, there's maybe a little bit of concern going in about defenseman Miro Haskinen. He takes a puck to the face during game three and gets some stitches, a lot of blood from his face, leaves the game, was announced that he would return via the TBS crew that was covering the game in the arena. But then we find out in the middle of the third period that Stars PR 
announced that he would not be returning to the ice. And then we find out after the game that that seemed to have to do more with the score uh, rather than the actual condition of Miro Haskinen. But all signs seem to be pointing to Haskinen playing in game four. Uh, according to Saad Youssef and many others who spoke with Pete DeBoer on Monday, Miro will technically be a game time decision. He is not in concussion protocol. Uh, I believe the extent of the injury is stitches. Uh, and so if he does play, I imagine that there will be some sort of additional face, face protection for Miro Haskinen. And, and if he can play without the risk of further long-term injury or, you know, something that, that would hurt himself physically long-term, uh, he absolutely must play. It, it was very apparent how valuable he was to this team or uh, valuable he is to this team, uh, despite only missing half of the game on Sunday night. Uh, Miro Haskinen leading the team, leading the NHL and time on ice. He is an absolute essential for this Stars team if they wish to win game four and head back to Dallas with the series tied up at two. So it seems like he should be fine. He's a game time decision. I know coaching staffs, especially Pete DeBoer, sometimes uh, a little secretive uh, with you know how they handle the health of players. I get it. Uh, you don't want to make promises that you can't hold up, but you also you know don't want to just straight up say he's not going to play. But just given the steps of how we got to this point, I would be really surprised if Miro Haskinen doesn't play uh, and you just know the competitor and the player that he is. If he can be out there, he definitely will. Uh, and it will be very detrimental if he's not. And likely no chance that the Stars win this series if Miro Haskinen is not out there. But we talked earlier about Jake Ottinger and his legacy. There's a few other players and one player in particular who has a legacy that needs to be written in this postseason, and that's Jason Robertson. Jason Robertson needs to show up in Game 4. I don't care if it's on 5-on-5. Five five. I don't care if it's on the power play. I know that that's kind of been the criticism of his two goals. Oh, his goals came on the power play, and uh, he can't play 5-on-5 five five in the postseason. I don't care how he produces. He needs to score in this game. He needs to leave his mark on this game four. I know we talk about it seemingly every time we're getting ready for a playoff game. Jason Robertson needs to show up. Robertson playing at his best could truly turn the tide of this series. Whenever Jason Robertson is hot, there's not anyone in the NHL who can stop him. And I know that there's speculation that's circul circling around on social media saying that he's injured or he's not fully 100%. And while I can believe that, I can believe he's not 100%. No one is 100% at this point in the season. Uh, just wear and tear of the body throughout the duration of a long and grinded out NHL schedule. No one's at 100%, but I'm not quite ready to believe that Jason Robertson is injured. Uh, I know we see that all the time. We see players playing through things that most of us normal humans couldn't fathom, but I, I just don't really see it. I don't feel like Jason Robertson's lacking in speed or, you know, his shot. I just think the accuracy is not there and the ability to finish just isn't there right now because he's getting his opportunities to score. It's not like he's being held in check where he's not even able to make moves. He's making moves and he's getting in position every now and then. He just hasn't been able to bury the puck. And so I feel like that there is a need for, for some sort of change. And I feel like that change needs to be the reuniting of the top line. Joe Pavelski has had a pretty good run with Mason Marchment and Max Domi, and, and maybe there's an opportunity for them to reunite somewhere down the road if needed. And Tyler Sagan has looked pretty good playing alongside Rope Hintz and Jason Robertson. But I, I think it's time to get the Avengers line back together. I think it's time to put Pavelski back on the wing with Hintz at center and Robertson on the other wing ju just to see what happens. I mean, really, when those three play together, good things tend to happen out there on the ice. And if the way Tyler Sagan's playing, who says that he can't find ways to continue to produce alongside Marchman and Domi? It's been a small sample size, but we've seen good things from those three in the past. I really do think that, that that's the best option that the Stars have right now. It's just to shake up the lineup a little bit, get Robertson back with Pavelski, a guy that he's very familiar with, a guy that he's very comfortable playing with, and, and just see what happens. Pavelski and Hintz both playing very well, both scoring points in bunches, and Robertson really needs to get in on that action and really take charge of this series from a goal-scoring perspective. If he can do that, if he can find a way to take over Game 4, there's no doubt in my mind that the Dallas Stars can win this game, capture the momentum, and eventually 
win this series. But you got to take it one game at a time, one period at a time, and even as little as one shift at a time. Big one tonight in Seattle for the Dallas Stars. The season isn't actually on the line, but in a lot of ways, it feels like it really is. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for tuning in and making us your first listen every single day. Remember to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We're always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also follow us on social media at Locked on Stars, Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. We will, of course, be right back here tomorrow talking about everything that happened in game four and then looking ahead uh, for what the rest of the series might look like after what transpires on the ice at Climate Pledge Arena on Tuesday. But I hope you guys enjoy your day, enjoy the game, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.